Okay, now it's recording. Okay, let's do the intro again. Welcome to a wonderful, spoilerific, uh, behind the scenes, uh, co op, uh, real time, nitpicking, editing of Seeker, where we go over the first chapters that were supposed to be good enough. A year ago, and now that we're looking at them, it's like, <gasps> oh god, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this is this is the part where the text is is uh, is so clean that stuff that didn't stand out earlier stands out now, to me at least. <laughs> There's also a couple of other sides to it, being that we've improved mm. slightly, and also. We know where the book ends now, mm -hmm. so it's also a case of, oh, hang on, that doesn't work out like it mm -hmm. did when we released part mm -hmm. one, so I think there's a lot of... <laughs> yeah, a lot of compacting. For example, one one thing that uh, is immensely helpful right now is that when I was going over some things in chapter two and three, I had uh, the uh, in progress chapter 16 open in another tab and uh, I was able to compare like okay the thing that we claim in chapter 2 doesn't actually turn out to be the way we claimed it so let's change it now so sprinkling mm -hmm. in the foreshadowing and making sure that the early book and later book info um, checks out and all that okay I found it so the old version read Jewel approached a neat row of gleaming hygiene booths that ran the length of a, of a large room. This thing wing featured the all-in-one standard booths that took care of the hygiene requirements of one's body as well as their gear in a fast compact cycle housed in a boxy shell which allowed many of them to be crammed together. <laughs> <laughs> Jewel found the plainness of the booths to be a comfort in itself. She knew that deeper inside the facility there were luxury booths but she'd never but she'd never bothered to inve investigate those. So lengthwise oh ah yeah, it is about one third shorter now. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I've gotten rid of certain extra stuff. Oh also I think you haven't you have uh you haven't actually seen the transformed beginning of chapter three. I forgot. Uh, I forgot to show you this one. So if you again, if you compare the two files, so the old one ran a little bit over a page. Mm. And this one's like <laughs> half a page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Beautiful. Cut, I cut out all the names. Yeah. And I I fudged it up a little bit so that the details are sort of the bounty details wouldn't be wouldn't require too much attention. Right. Rose upon rose. Mark this. And I think you can go on. Don't don't read the first line. That's my. Uh huh. My. I. Uh, uh, but she'd never bothered to investigate the option. My mind is saying that option, but again, I think that might just be personal. Her credentials were checked and confirmed. The hatch opened and she stepped inside. The door slid shut behind her and a menu lit up. Jules scrolled past the premium options and tapped basic four in the list. Mechanical cleansing by water, bacterial transplant for prolonged freshness, and gear cleaning. The pod looked similar to the one in the shuttle, albeit a little bigger and with multiple compartments built into the walls. She removed her jacket and placed it in dry storage. She then opened her bag and pulled her clothing out. Stuff. I'm already bored reading this. This literally just needs to say she undressed and stuffed her shit in a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, like, uh, there's this, okay, I'll, I'll continue on. So she puts her stuff in the slot for cleaning. She took off the last of her clothing and stuffed it in before sealing the see-through door. 
Once she'd sealed her bag in alongside her jacket, she closed the other door and pressed at the screen to begin the cycle. It flashed to confirm the order and an advert appeared on the screen. It's too much. <laughs> yeah. too much. You could do this in like two, maybe three sentences. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> so yeah, basically, right now, the, the part where I stopped, where, where I was, well, I wouldn't say stuck, it's just that uh, I was getting tangled into, into the task was mm. cutting down the whole hygiene unit thing. Yeah. This this is another instance of we've got the author knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and I think we've tried to put too much of that knowledge into the story itself. And the shit's in the compartments to keep it dry and to, to freshen it up a little bit. But that's not even... We've already said that with the previous paragraph. Well, uh, I think uh, it might be relevant mm. to say that she stuffed some things into the cleaning drawers and some things into storage. That. But but again, I, this shouldn't uh, take uh, two sentences. It should uh, I, take two I agree, words. I agree with you on that. And I, I was just saying that the only reason mm. that I put so much focus on her putting stuff in compartments was to say, oh, her stuff's not going to get wet. Oh. That was that was my thinking behind all that. And it's yeah. taken me two sentences just to say <laughs> that alone. So, hmm, not, not my best work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I know that uh, I put the whole mechanical by water thing in myself, but even that seems excessive now. Like, okay, I, I know that uh, that was that was the alternative to the whole soap and water and uh, and all that. So, so there, there might still be a little bit of world building issue in here. So basically, they, they don't. The idea is to minimize, minimize the water usage. So maybe, maybe it's maybe, maybe it's just ultrasound vibrations that uh, that shake the shit off mechanically. Hmm. Because I, I remember that original version. Uh, was was about uh, water, soap, rinsing, and and drying, but uh, uh, but point one, if we're already introducing the bacteria mist, that's basically that's the long term maintenance option anyway. Mm -mm. The the water water cleaning would actually be a luxury option. But I think th I th think that was partly the point as well because she's stressed out and I think mechanical cleansing by water would have been one way to relax her a little bit. Yeah, but uh, on the other yeah, but that's that's the thing. Uh, there is a lot of emphasis on how short this process is. Mm. So there isn't. This, this is there. There isn't much re relaxation happening. Like she's not taking a shower. If no. there is, if there is water involved, the water is like super thin jets, going like more like mm -hmm. a car wash, really. And and okay, it might wake her up, but it's it's not something you would consider relaxing. So so actually the. Uh, whatever the mechanical options, it's it's actually gonna lead to a little bit bigger problem. Whatever you decide, I think there should be something that step one wipes the slate clean. Mm -hmm. Step yeah, two yeah. adds the bacteria. Yeah, yeah. You know. If you don't choose water, then ultrason ultrasonic or whatever. I, yeah, I think I something think needs to wipe yeah, the slate clean. I, I think I can leave in water. I just need to word it better. Like mm. I re again, I remember when I when I put the mechanical cleansing, and it uh, it sort of it felt smart at the time. <laughs> but but uh, but yeah, reading it back now, it's like mm, 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 yeah, it's, it's kind of yeah. 
Like I, I, re I remember why it worked, but okay, where where robots? Okay. Uh, read on wherever you were because I I lost I lost track now. She rested her head against the side wall and closed her eyes. The pod started to buzz before jets of high-pressured water filled the chamber. It only lasted a few seconds before they died out. The chamber was then flooded with a blue mist, a concoction of selected bacteria carefully bred to keep an average human fresh and groomed up to 20 standard cycles. At least that's what the advert said. In reality, it took about six before the colony would start to wear off and needed to be replenished. She knew some seekers going on longer missions would sometimes make the investment for miniature grooming bots, mites as most folks called them. Under ideal conditions, an army of those would keep you clean. Uh, sorry. Wow, I just totally stacked it there on that sentence. <laughs> Until I... <laughs> Bad. No, this isn't happening, brain. Under Maybe. ideal con... Go on, sorry. Maybe just say ideally. Although, that's... It, it wasn't, no, it was oh. literally just my brain locked oh, okay. up. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> uh, you're reading too fast, hang on. <laughs> okay, take two. <laughs> Under ideal conditions, an army of those would keep you clean... Uh, okay, I'm thinking it says cleansed, it doesn't. Under ideal conditions, an army of those would keep you cleaned thrice as long as the bacteria. Then again, they were far more expensive, and the Seeker's line of work often meant far more hostile conditions than the tiny bots were capable were designed to function with. What is going on? Uh, okay, uh, I think I understand. This is Techno Bubble, and I think we should salvage it and keep it as an Etrix entry. But I'm I'm gonna cut down on it, cut down on it like a lot. She knew some seekers going on longer missions would sometimes make the investment for miniature grooming bots, mites, as most folk called them. Under ideal conditions, an army of those would keep you cleaned thrice as long as the bacteria. Then again, they were far more expensive, and the seekers' line of work often meant far more hostile conditions than the tiny bots were designed to function in. Thank you, brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good for you. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, but, I need but to it's, prove yeah, it but to it's, myself. But it's still excessive techno bubble. Yeah. Uh, so I can. Th this is something I can fix right away. She knew some seekers. She knew. I will leave the start to be for the moment. Sometimes invest in miniature grooming pods or mites. Now I I know where this under ideal conditions where this is coming from. This comes from uh, <laughs> mannequin I'm with challenge. You. I'm oh, okay, listening. okay. <laughs> 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 I wasn't sure if Skype had frozen or not. Uh, <laughs> this comes from comparing, let's say, medical technology or or cosmetics or uh, uh, medicine or contraceptives, and. Uh, when different contraceptive methods are compared, you usually get two numbers. One is how many, well, what's, what's the success percentage for this method under ideal conditions or when, when applied ideally. Mm. And, uh, and that's, that's where you get, uh, get the points that a condom used under ideal conditions will work like 90% of the time I think or, or even 99 also and that that was the that was a big cultural rift for me and uh, and they sort of like <laughs> mind blown <laughs> when executed under ideal conditions a uh, an interrupted intercourse will also have a very high success rate however under the sort of business as usual, everyday conduct, these numbers go down. 
Mm. So it's like uh, when uh, when testing for a medicine or a method or whatever, uh, when you're using something exactly as it's supposed to work. This 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 is like game testing when you're when you're uh, trying something out exactly the way it was supposed to work, then things working out well uh, happens frequently. <laughs> the moment you start using it as a as a normal sloppy dirty human <laughs> who 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 has a hundred of windows open in the background and and maybe a few processes and some porn downloading, then all that uh, all that goes out of the window and a further tangent i think that's that's also what's happening with google hangouts because i've seen uh, i've seen uh, google themselves using it uh, for some online courses where they they give a lecture using google hangout and it works marvelously because of course <laughs> they <laughs> they they have optimized their systems uh, uh, for how it's designed and for how it's supposed to work, but when a random home user with the random system with the random quirks and and uh, and uh, oddities of their machine and add-ons and and blockages and and whatever and regional settings, when they try to replicate that, it's like <laughs> collapse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> that's that's where the under ide ideal conditions came from, but that is the sort of phrase that belongs into a data entry. Mm. Like it's it's an encyc it's encyclopedia talk, not uh, uh, not sort of mental drift tangent thing. Mm -hmm. So. Ideally, those would keep you fresh fries. <laughs> this is a little bit of a mouthful, but ideally, those would keep you fresh fries as long as the bacteria. Peresi. Peresi. Uh, pu pu Peresi <laughs> sounds delicious. I'll have two, thank you, waiter. This, uh, this this sounds like an awesome name for somebody, Mr. Peresi. <laughs> <laughs> but they were pricey. A seekers work, just seekers I'd, work. I would personally just put Jules' line of work. No, but this is more like this is a uh, generalizing. This is not about her. This is about being frugal. Like if you're, uh, if you're a, mm, let's see. It's like. If you if you work as a driver, it's not practical to fear uh, to wear stilettos. It's that sort of statement. <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah, a seeker's work, a seeker's line of work. Ah, plural. <laughs> uh, and the seeker's line, a seeker's line of work. Uh, and the seeker's line of work. I feel like there should be something. <laughs> this is where I'm starting to twitch, where I know <laughs> that technically there there should be, <laughs> but <laughs> I would <will> resist. <laughs> and a seeker's line of work. Yeah, I think it should be a. A 
Ideally, those would keep you fresh thrice as long, but they were pricey. And a seeker's line of yes, nailed it. And the seeker's line of work. The phrase here was something like, "Was hardly ideal." Yeah. Ideally, ideal. Hardly. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, intentional. Okay. Uh, I will cut. I will cut it down to this right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the uh, the second half of the sentence will change later on. It's just that right now, just to get rid of all that train, and this will reveal the. Uh, the proper issues later on. Okay. I think we can carry on. Jewel was lost in thought. She wasn't used to having time to think, ever, nor did she miss it. Her stasis pod allowed her to easily deal with that. Complete a job, hop in the pod, hop out, get a new job. There was no time to stress over the things in between. All this meant is that Jewel had no experience nor skill when it came to dealing with her own thoughts. Now she'd let her guard down and her mind just wouldn't shut up. She found herself in a truly foul mood. Worse, she couldn't pinpoint its source. The argument with Raptor hadn't helped, but usually she would solve it like any other situation. Confirm the next job, head out, but today even the trusty network had turned against her. Right. So this needs some proper slashing. So this part is what I would mostly keep. But uh, there's there's too much repetition or like point one uh we shouldn't outright say that she was lost in thought. That's that's mm. the that's the idea that should sort of come out of what she's doing. And there's also all this uh, do a job stasis, and this means you're not used to used to thinking, and 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 that means. You need to do stasis and job, so it's it's like uh, it's like circular argument, uh, or like it's it's sort of chasing its own tail, I say. Mhm. Mm so let's see. Uh, so the idea that we do want to keep in here is that she was caught off guard by her own thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, like the whole mm, this, this, this is where the little contradiction comes in that uh, if, the, uh, if the cleaning takes such a short time like this this isn't this isn't the uh this isn't the sort of shower logic where you sit and and your mind sort of starts grinding mhm mm so it it's more like a a flash thing yeah this and uh, this this means uh the whole call of guard by her own thoughts needs to start more abruptly like it, it needs a, it, need, it needs a different start and also uh, we could indicate that that the sort of this weird 
brain thing started started before she entered the the pod, or maybe she or maybe she added extra time to the cycle or or whatever. Okay. So, be, uh, what I'm. It might sure, even yeah? start when she's on her journey from solitaire. Might be where thoughts start to brew, and then as she gets mm. into the pod, it starts to all come to a head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for example, the uh, uh, the process of picking the options and stuffing her gear and dealing with the mundane shit gave her a moment of uh, like helped her to ignore her thoughts for a little bit, but mm -hmm. now that all that is done. She's helpless again. Yeah. Actually, let me write that down. Here, so... during walking was able to push push it back when dealing with hygiene um, menu That's done. It's like uh, it's like when you when you have a really long and stressful day, and and uh, and during the day when you when you have all the work to do and when you're busy with everything, you don't really have the time to sort of start contemplating things, and then when you when you're finally free from it and at home and safe and uh, nothing's chasing you, then suddenly like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it all just comes on top at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all sort of <laughs> comes crashing <laughs> down on you. So I think we can, we can create the, the same thing here quite easily. And this means we don't, we don't even have to we don't even have to stress uh, the whole uh, stasis thing. We just need to sort of keep saying that usually she, she she keeps herself busy. She has no skill uh, for dealing with her thoughts, mm -hmm. and and she had let her guard down, and her, so uh, the part that she'd let her guard down and her mind just wouldn't shut up. This part I would keep as is. I will mark it with blue. But the next one, she found herself in a truly foul mood. First, you can pinpoint its source. This sort of repeats. Mm. So I would try to smash this and the previous part. It's also telling, not showing. Yeah. It's like we're telling twice instead of putting it together into a sort of uh, unraveling situation. I do like the end, but today even the trusty network had yeah, turned against yeah, her. I think that's spot on. Yeah, that one I would also keep as is. Mm -hmm. So, highlight. Blue. So yeah, but the point today, comma, even trusty network turned yeah, against her. Yeah, probably. Okay. So basically, the idea is that she is caught off guard by her thoughts. Normally, she would, normally she would deal with it by keeping busy. Mhm. Mm But 
not today. <laughs> dun dun dun. Okay, I think uh, I will work on it on my own because I've now that uh, not that I've identified what to do here and what's what's the this is what we want to say thing. Jewel considered her options. The network would most likely update in a few standard hours, giving her first choice. If the network still failed to deliver, her second best choice was heading to another system with a seeker hub. She was weighing up the chances of finding a worthy contract elsewhere. Risky, but perhaps a practical choice considering the nosedive of Rystar rates. Mm. I'm super indifferent about this entire paragraph. Yeah. So it's more like uh, again. I think uh, if uh, if we keep it in, I could try to trim it down to just one sentence that uh, she didn't she didn't see many options. She could wait or she could go to another system. Ah, oh, yeah, actually, mm. that's a good idea. I'm and I I, I, l I like the idea that the right star rates are sort of in decline I but I mean if you can get it in bonus if not don't stress I think I'm not gonna put it in because this is uh, this is in, uh, it's this is like trying trying to bring in a whole separate topic that we haven't actually dealt with at all and there's no payoff to it later okay uh, she did many options and also I think the uh, uh, the declining rates uh, those aren't the those aren't exactly the problem with seekers. The problem with seekers is that it's it's not an organization that she thought it it was, and mm -hmm. she she can no longer mm, she can no longer uh, keep claiming to herself or keep lying to herself that yeah this is what I have what I wanted to do all the time or like this yeah. is what she wanted to do but but now that she she is doing what she wanted to do. These, uh, the, th this place that was supposed to be the bollocks isn't <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. So the, she could be ha unhappy about the rate. She could be unhappy about the recruitment, which we have already brought in. But mm -hmm. ultimately, that's that's not uh, that's not the real problem. There, it's sort of a mix between. Never meet your heroes and be careful what you wish for. Yeah. yeah. And also... Uh, the awesome things are not awesome for the reasons you think they are. <laughs> okay, so... I see a, a lot of trimming potential here. Next. <laughs> after this one, uh, I'm going to go all the way down to Eager to Return, okay. and then after this one, I'm going to take a quick break. Okay. <laughs> Reward myself. A ding, and the soft, warm air against her skin interrupted her thoughts. She waited for the cycle to run its course and the gear compartments to unlock. She dug out her plain underwear first, followed by her field trousers, freshly pressed, then a shirt. Finally, her holsters and straps to house the nightsticks and SMGs. With her weapons in place, Jewel no longer felt naked and could take her time to stretch out her toes inside the warm socks. Love that imagery, but mm -hmm. I can see where everything's... why everything's going wrong. Her boots smelled of fresh Kaiser sand root, a scent marking another strain of the maintenance bacteria. Again, awesome. She tried the boots' other options, but always returned to this particular mix. In ways she couldn't explain, these scents brought her inner peace. 
She took a few more breaths before slipping her feet in and lacing up. Open! The door slid aside and Jewel blinked at the sudden harshness of the bright light bouncing off the other booths. Some early shift workers were meandering about, preparing for a busy day ahead. Openly carried small weapons were not strictly prohibited on the station, but the display of force didn't help to improve the Seeker's public image either. Jewel quickly fetched the... Jewel quickly fetched the rest of her clothing and hastened to zip up her jacket on the go. On the way back, she glanced a handful of long life snacks. Oh, where have I... Oh, she glanced... Okay, sorry, I've done that thing again. <laughs> on the way back, she purchased a handful of long life snacks from an Omni vendor and squeezed them into the bag. She glanced at Solitaire, no visitors waiting this time, and sped up, eager to return. Right. Okay, so I want to, yeah, I want to keep stretching toes in the warm socks and... And uh, the Kaiser root. Yeah, this, this is a keeper. Mm-hmm. The uh, trying other options is iffy, but the whole mm, gathering the stuff part needs to be a lot shorter. Besides, we have already recited what she's wearing, and we've said that this is pretty much her own only active gear, so mm -hmm. there's no reason to uh, recite it again. There's a lot of fluff here as well. Yeah. Bought her inner piece, and she felt naked with her weapons and all this and that. <laughs> So yeah, keep the blue part, deal with the rest. Also, uh, the harshness of bright light might no longer work because uh, the I, I had already made it a golden soft light <laughs> earlier on. Mm. It could be it could be more like that the the golden light didn't feel as soft anymore. Mm, but yeah. even but yeah, but even that I think is unnecessary. Uh, maybe her eyes are just adjusted to the booth and it was slightly dimmer in the booth and she stepped out and it's like, oh wow, this is brighter than I remember, you know. Yeah, or or maybe that the lights had brightened and, and some early shift workers... You know what they do at some campsites is that overnight, the showers and that are still open, but mm -hmm. it's like the lights are super dim. Mm. And then obviously in the morning, the lights come on. Hmm. And then, and then they're kept on bright all day for some reason. And then in the evening they're super bright. And then around like eleven, twelve o'clock, it it goes to the dim lights. So mm, dim mode. Mm hmm. But you can still have showers, which is lovely. <laughs> And um, at the vendor, this is the point where she forgets to buy water. Mm -hmm. So this needs the there there needs to be an interruption in the middle. Explicit. Mm. And it could, uh, I might have to make it a little bit longer then, but yeah, basically uh, I'm imagining it so that, that she is picking, yeah, this, this might be a place where uh, instead of saying that, yeah, she grabbed these, it's, uh, we have to witness it more in real time that she's picking this and this, oh, what's this, a new thing, this, oh, is that, is anybody at my shuttle? No? Oh, okay. Oh, so that would be it. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, did I forget anything? Nah. I've got it <laughs> all. <laughs> so maybe maybe she got uh, maybe she got some more uh, snack items or maybe uh, some new new flavor 
mm-hmm. so that she has enough items, just not all the items that she needs. Yeah. I can get behind that. Mm-hmm. Just going back real quick. Um, I mean, all this talk of weapons and what have you, I'm pretty sure that can all be cut. Like, the mm-hmm. weapons were not strictly prohibited. That can all go. Yeah, because if... Uh, let's say... Uh, if... Seekers... Or, or, like, if the station is pretty much there like if it's if it's it's a little bit like a military base isn't it mm. like it's uh seeker hub is there and the seeker hub is the main main economy in the station like okay there are other there are there are civilians still and there are other industries there but the seeker hub is a major presence yeah i mean so, they've got they've got their own docking stations and stuff like that you yeah know, right? yeah so, at least two of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so uh uh so it's basically we can we can sort of extrapolate that seekers pretty much run this station even even if they are not uh, actively organizing everything yeah. so i would i would think that if you wear your weapon in a military base it's, it's not frowned upon no. besides everybody yeah, no, everybody would enough. assume that you know how to handle your shit so uh, it, it's it's not like uh, it's not like you're I don't know waving it around like a noob or anything so it's <laughs> like yeah norm- like these are these are my tools this is my hammer I keep it in my pants <laughs> yeah it's no different to like an engineer roaming around with like his tool belt on for example. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Take a break? Yep. Break ahoy! And we are recording again. <laughs> Magic! <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. So we're still in chapter three. Yeah. And this time... Final paragraph. This time we're about to reach the dun 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 <laughs> moment. Yep. So I'm just going to blitz all of this one. Yes. Okay. The shuttle doors opening made Jewel yawn. Returning to her own space made her realise how tired she really was. A slight breeze greeted her and she saw paper pages rustling on the floor. She gripped one of her firearms in silence, locked the door behind her and readied herself to fight whomever had thought trashing her shuttle was a good idea. She charged out from behind the stasis pod, only to find herself in the, usu- in the usual sh- solitude. Uh, slow down. There was nobody in there. Even the shuttle's interior looked much as it always did. The only irregularity was one of the vents blowing a steady stream of air at the console. Jewel saw that the paper trail was following the airflow. She looked around to be certain no one else had entered. One thing she was certain of, upon docking, she had gone over her usual routine. She knew she had switched off all onboard life support for her, for her time on the station. Whether the, si- whether the site before her was an intruder's doing, external tampering, or a simple system malfunction, Jewel felt her shuttles in a sanctum violated. Suppressing her litter-induced anger, she finally turned her attention to the spilled folder itself. There was a handful of printed credits, twice that of the Yorth Justice Centre job, even by a modest estimate. She started brushing them into a pile, and made an effort to sort and stack the larger documents. Her fingers met a smooth, heavy blank paper. Jewel turned it over and found it was a picture of an elderly Archean male. She she recognised the face as one Maxis Harper, her father. Dun 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 dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, it needs a, a lot of work. Well, not a lot yeah. of work, but it needs a whole lot of, uh, again, uh, fluff trimming and compacting yeah. and compounding. Yeah. All of these things and more. <laughs> Fortunately, a lot of these can can be with just better phrasing. Let's see. Retract. 
referring to her own space, we don't need to say that out loud. We could say that she yawned as the door opened or something like this. Mm -hmm. I think we, we've tried to be clever here. Or the opening shuttle doors. Ah, actually, I think the opening shuttle door made Jewel yawn. I yawned because Jewel yawned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when the reader reads it, they will yawn. So, <laughs> so let's let's keep it in, but <laughs> let's make it. Practicing like sub subliminal voodoo on our readers. <laughs> <laughs> well, a yawn is so contagious a thing that this isn't even very subliminal. This <laughs> is just. Yawn <laughs> <laughs> and miss. The bunkhouse. So we don't have to specify whether she's always tired, whether she's still tired, just that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Inside. Papers breeze. <laughs> yeah, papers breeze. <laughs> but I'm. Um, mm -hmm. You're welcome, world. <laughs> That's my quota for the month, field. Okay. So ready, ready. The arm locked door. Uh, speaking of weapons, oh, it occurred to me. During the uh, blip, 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 during the uh, uh, shower, quote unquote, shower scene. I don't think we brought up the nightsticks uh, in first chapter. So point D: Should we should we bring them up? Uh, somewhere in the middle, or should we bring them up when she's about to use them anyway? Hmm. I'm not usually a fan of the whole. Like, I I I I know this isn't that, but the whole items appearing out of nowhere thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kn I know. So I like it's having like... a bit of feed into them. But I know what you're saying. Right, it, with that in mind, the prison station would be the first place where she pulls her out of her bag and starts. Uh, they don't even have to come out of her bag because I have introduced, uh, or I have glanced over some uh, cargo or, or gear holes. So she could have like a small armory. She doesn't. She doesn't need to rely. Like, <laughs> you can use everything that's in the bag. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we don't have to. We don't have to rely on her bag. We we can uh, take stuff out of the shuttle's gear hold. Mm -hmm. Of course, another matter is that if they're part of her standard equipment, 
uh, why would she leave them behind earlier? So we can we can bring them in earlier by saying she left those in in the in the gear hold. So in fact, let me scroll back to chapter one and at least make a mention that uh, that she has them. Because, uh, because yeah, the the whole oh by the way she had this thing which we have never mentioned before. This kind of I'm I'm also kind of concerned about that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if there's some gear that you can sort of assume that somebody has, or or like it's it's not a huge plot pl plot point that they have something. Like it's not a huge plot point that you have a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah, I just took it out of my bag. <laughs> mm. If it was a case of I was about to use the lighter to solve a massive problem though, and I hadn't mentioned yeah. the lighter before, that's a huge problem right there. Uh, although in the first chapter, uh, she she's in the middle of preparations when uh, when the whole oh yeah we're docking now happens, so mm. th this could be an appropriate place to say uh, that she she clipped her guns in the place and left the nightsticks for now. Yeah. Because she 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 would uh, she wouldn't expect to use either in the station really. This is a safe environment. I would I would hope so. Yeah. So it's more like it's more more about not being naked. Personally, I'd probably take like one nightstick and one SMG. I don't know. It's not good that I'm coming up with all this shit <laughs> right now. <laughs> So hey, we should change this entirely fundamental <laughs> thing, yo. <laughs> I'm thi I'm thinking like video game logic, like I'd want yeah. a firearm and a melee weapon, but she she's quite capable of kicking the shit out of anyone less lesser trained than herself. So I mean, I don't know. Anyway, I made the note in, in chapter one, and mm -hmm. now where were we? Chapter three, end of chapter three. I mean, if if we go into gear, then I would also say that why does she have two SMGs? Mm. Like dual wielding, makes no sense! <laughs> So you say that, but I, I massively disagree. <laughs> In the case of guns, maybe, but I mean there are. Yes, plenty I am. I am specifically speaking about guns. Okay. Like, why does she have two SMGs? Is what I said. I okay. didn't say anything about anything else. Like, okay, uh, we can sort of uh, rationalize that one is backup, mm -hmm. but the way it's the way it's reading, it is actually kind of like, yeah, she has to do all <laughs> guns. So it is it, it is one of those uh like I bet it's one of the things that people might pick on. And okay. And for that occasion I I will preemptively put the sort of protection in place and say the other is backup. Mhm. Mm like okay. better 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 not make claims about dual wielding because that's just dumb. Some of my characters will do wield. <laughs> Some. <laughs> but you can imagine it will be like Fallon, last stand kind of deal. He's picked up an enemy assault rifle as well as his own and he's like backing off. He's covered in blood, you know, and then when they run dry he's like fuck it and runs out. It would be like a last stand kind of deal. 
And and also it, it's the kind of deal where you don't aim. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the original reason why why Jewel had two SMGs is that if she came across a corridor, she could just flood it with bullets and in the confusion do what she needs to do. Like I don't think she's using them to be accurate. I think she is just using them to, for people to keep their fucking heads down. I'd duck and cover if some loon came at me with dual firearms. I'd be like, no, I'm staying the fuck away. I would stay down if somebody <laughs> came at me with one. <laughs> yeah, but you, you'd stay even further down if there was two. <laughs> at that point, I wouldn't know there was two. Anyway, if, 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 if anybody, if anybody tries <coughs> to, if anybody tries to take take that point up for arguing. You're on your own. <laughs> okay, fair play. <laughs> and then I will go on the record and say, for the record, I personally think this idea won't fly. But we kept it in because cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got some of my own thoughts about dual wielding firearms and melee weapons, but that is a heavy discussion for another time. Probably when we get onto the Jasmines and the rogues of our universe. Danger zone topics. Not the scope of today's chat. No. Uh, Although I can already see this dual wielding section being a little one of those snippets that you put up. And I'm going to watch it back and be like, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> 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 that is a good point. <laughs> there, are, there are some things I'm going to fight a corner on, and there are some things that I can take or leave, and there are other things that I think, you know, like the name of the Yorth home system. I am never going to fight for that. I've got no mm. clue what I'm talking about. Just a placeholder name. Like, you are far more expertise-wise in coming up with a credible name for that system. So, there are some things I won't fight for, and then there are other things that I will fight for. And in the instance of, like, for Rogue, for example, like, she has to, she must use dual swords. It's just... No, I'm I'm not... Can you... Yeah, no, no, no. No, I know you're talking about the SMGs in this instance. Yes, I, I am I am only, I'm I am only talking... About... Look, look. When yeah. I say, uh, I am only specifically talking about I guns <laughs> i don't i don't care what you say about other weaponry this is this isn't even a discussion like do do what you want i'm just saying that making any claims about uh, gun dual wielding uh, is is dumb but for other uh, for other things right now you're trying to slap on a whole different conversation that is not the same topic that I'm talking about. I was on a tangent. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was doing something else. I completely dropped the whole thing about SMGs and, and dual wielding guns. I was onto something else. Sorry. Yes, I probably should have been a bit more clear yeah, about that. Yeah, it would have been helpful to say that, oh, by the way, speaking of swords... Okay. Like, uh, because at the moment it very much sounded like you are directly arguing for the uh, benefit of, uh, uh, of firearms because they, because <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, that wasn't, that <sighs> and wasn't I, and I And, I, and I, I shouldn't be using my brain energy for that right now. Where were we? So this top bit is her entering the shuttle mm -hmm. and she sees the papers and then she prepares like to deal with what she perceives to be like an intrusion. Mm -hmm. um, and then she realizes there is no intruder but something is amiss. Like, she knew when she landed mm -hmm. that she shut everything off, but in this instance, something has... There is an anomaly happening. This is wrong. So... Um, and, and then her focus is on the folder. Okay. Um, 
Is it? This just feels like oh, it's another thing that's gone wrong today for her in a little bit of. Uh, actually, oh, no. Uh, this is this is bigger. This is like everything has gone wrong to me, wrong with me today, and now this. Yeah. So this is like uh, when she's all al she's already uh, tenderized, and 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 now she's helpless. She can't. Mm. She can't even. She can't even have a moment in her shuttle, basically. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're trying to get across with this. I think I'm gonna executive decision. I'm gonna cut that off the end there. Okay. Just for the time being, because that's an entirely different section. That's talking about the credits and things like that. And where she starts tidying everything up. Okay. Let's see. So we need breeze and papers. Mm -hmm. And basically readying her weapon and locking the door should be like one uh, one decision or one action really or one mm -hmm. e one instinct really yeah like she readies her, her like whichever hands maybe she's, she's probably ambidextrous whichever hand she is readying one uh, one weapon and and mm. Shutting the door. Yeah, so she's, she's like pulling out one gun and slamming her hand into the door shut, ready to like, bang. Well, well, uh, no. No. Bang, bang, no. This is this is more like when you when you put the security code in. Okay. Because she also needs to be quiet in case there is an intruder. Mm. A bang, no, 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 no. <laughs> So only to find herself in the usual solitude probably is too much on too, the nose. Too much, yeah. Great. I mean, that could probably go entirely. Nobody in there. So let me think. So she comes in, she feels a breeze, and I think the paper rustling should be more sound than than vision. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have a good image of the shuttle insides, but uh, I would think that she she can't see everything. And also the sort of it's more like early warning signs than seeing that your place is thrashed. It's more like mm -hmm. when she steps in proper then she sees that uh, oh oh Yeah. Heard. So there's a breeze. She hears papers prepare gun lock door one motion mm-hmm Uh, she knows nothing of thrashing yet, but more like whoever thought 
the intrusion was a good idea, but even even this is an iffy one. Uh, ready to fight. Ready to fight. And uh, I think even the shuttle's interior looked much as it always did. If it looks the same, we don't need to say it. We only need to say that uh, that there were papers on the floor and there was airflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, I will cut out the only irregularity as well. So, one of the vents. So again, breeze and papers. Yeah. A lot of repetition. No, in in this case, it's not the repetition. It's uh, uh, this it's is the difference sort of between hearing it and seeing it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's uh, that's the thing. Uh, when she steps in, then she feels and hears, and now she gets visual confirmation that oh, indeed, there is wind blowing and there is papers rustling. Well, shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the point that she uh, she was sure she had done all the routines this is kind of a necessary point It's more like she knew that uh, that during docking Maybe it's automatic. She doesn't even need to need to go over her routines. She knows that. During docking. Okay, felt the inner sanctum violated is again something that we need to get across, but we can't say it like this. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> so it's like she it's felt a sense of violation or something. I don't know. That's again more telling. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing as with she was in shock or she was lost in thought. Mm -hmm. We have to convey that she was lost in thought, but we can't outright state it. Like, I will tell you she was lost in thought. <laughs> I will tell you she felt her inner sanctum violated. <laughs> so there, there could be some some reactions and despair and shit here okay and actually the uh, this yeah. one should go together with this one Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, yeah, actually, if we cut the paragraph here, this will give a little bit of uh, sort of um, digestion time. So gives her time to be angry and to and to be feel molested. Mm. <laughs> Who molested my shuttle? <laughs> Yo, fuckers. <laughs> Printed credits is probably pr you know like printed is probably too much. They just say credits. They're obviously in physical form. <laughs> mm, no, actually, this is kind of a this is a 
uh, a plot point because or or like this is an important point because usually you don't get the that's 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 the whole thing about credit it's a it's an imaginary unit it's uh, mm -hmm. it's digital money so if you have a printout it is it's it's a high very high highly regular highly irregular thing so so perhaps add to the regularity but some somehow she would yeah but how does she recognize that uh, that these are uh, printed credits so it's it's more like it probably shouldn't uh, we should we should uh, even call them something a little bit different like uh, I don't know certificates for like it's it's not it's not the same as paper money. No. It's it's more like it's more like a sort of. What are those things that Archer has to when they're in Monaco bearers bearers bonds? Yeah, some that, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So some 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 sort of. Some sort of uh, uh, high-value documents that uh, that give you access to to credits or or some 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 sort of thing like that. Like uh, yeah, I need to I need to think about that one a little bit because I think if we just say that uh, that they are uh, physical physical credits or printed credits then that's a little bit of lapse in world building mm. because basically all other monetary economy happens digitally and if if the economy happens physically then it's then it's different kind of exchanges then you exchange goods or or service or whatever also I think that uh, tangent ahead I think that uh, even if there even if there are uh, physical currencies those would be local the, yeah. so, the, so the whole point of of standard credit is that it's the sort of conversion unit between whatever currencies there might be. Mm -hmm. Jewel turned it over and found it was a picture of an elderly. I we probably do with omitting a lot of this found. Jewel turned it over, comma. It was a picture of an elderly Archean male. Mm hmm yeah like the, there is the point let me separate it for, for the moment there is the point that uh, this uh, this is a moment of slowdown so there could be a little bit of fluff and padding to sort of make the build up <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah uh, There is also the thing that uh, she doesn't she doesn't uh, necessarily know that it's it's a picture. It's just a paper mm. on one moment and when she turns it over it's like <gasps> So maybe turned it over and stared into a picture or well, stared at the picture. Stared at, yeah. Found herself staring. <laughs> Stared at the at the picture. <laughs> what makes this hobo? <laughs> yeah, the last sentence is okay. The last sentence is the slow is the is the exact amount of slowdown that we need, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, actually.
Okay, yeah, so basically the breakdown or the sort of elements of this scene are she gets back to the shuttle, she's tired she feels the breeze and hears the rustling mm -hmm. she readies herself and uh, expects an intruder she finds none but sees that uh, the papers are all, are all over the place mm -hmm. uh, she feels violated but we don't say it th like that <laughs> uh, once once uh, she has scattered herself a little bit she she gets into picking the shit up yeah among other papers she finds the photograph dun 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 hmm. end scene yeah <laughs>